This is the current state of my fiber laser cutter. Uh, it's been an ongoing project for the past six months and I'm going to be making a video series about how I got to this point. So if you're fiber laser curious, stay tuned. Ever since I saw the first Glowforge ads on YouTube uh, several years ago, I've been fascinated with lasers. Um, I have a, a 100 watt CO2 laser and it's amazing, but metal. Can't cut metal. So I looked into uh, plasma cutters and found that they didn't really have the detail I was looking for. And so I began to thoroughly research the internet for anything about building a fiber laser cutter. And I found nothing. And that's how this all began. I'm going to be sharing some of my experiences with you, but please understand I'm a complete novice on this subject. Lasers can be very dangerous, so if you choose to operate one, please understand the safety risks and do your own research, and uh, please be safe. I guess what I said a second ago wasn't entirely true. When I was researching the internet to see how to build a fiber laser, I did find some Reddit posts of people discussing the idea, um, but the takeaway was that it was too dangerous, too expensive, and too complicated of a project. While I don't necessarily disagree that it's uh, dangerous and expensive, I think we can make it less complicated if we take a look at the different systems that make up a fiber laser cutter. I'm going to be going over these in more detail in subsequent videos, but uh, for now let's just start with, um, there's the machine controller, which is the brains of the operation. Uh, it controls the laser cutting system um, along with the gas assist, uh, and then also controls uh, the gantry system that uh, moves the laser head around. Um, there's a cooling system for the laser and that connects directly to the laser source and head and then um, we need to do something with a nasty fume so we need some kind of a fume extractor. Uh, before I go any further I want to tell you about the two major hurdles I had in this project um, that actually almost kept me from even starting the project to begin with. Um, first is the power requirements uh, that a laser machine like this requires and uh, trying to figure that out uh, in a home garage like this was a challenge. A lot of the components I was seeing wanted uh, 380 volts, three phase power, which I don't have in a garage. And buying a rotary phase converter was just out of my budget, so I couldn't go that route. And so I was able to find some of the lower wattage components that would run on uh, 240 volts. And I happened to have uh, several slots open still in my electrical panel. So I had an electrician come in, install uh, three separate uh, 240 volt lines. So I was able to power my laser source on one line, the water chiller on a, another line, and then all the servo motors and the controller on another line. And then <laughs> I can also power my exhaust fan on yet a separate 120 volt line. Now um, some people uh, are using air compressors uh, as their assist gas but I just don't have the, the power available in my garage to, to go that route. One more thing about the laser source. I bought a Rakus 1000 watt laser source, but you can also get a 1500 watt laser source that will also run off 240 volts. Anything higher than that uh, requires three phase 380 volts. Uh, second was the assist gas. Um, I've never worked with gases before, so it was a big learning curve. Uh, understanding uh, how to set the systems up and where I get the gas and, and uh, the cost and everything was uh, a lot to figure out. So depending on what you're cutting, you either use a uh, high pressure nitrogen or a low pressure oxygen uh, to cut through the metal. And alternatively, you can substitute the nitrogen with compressed air uh, if you don't care about uh, the edge finish as much. Now, uh, the gas is quite expensive. I have both a, a 300 cubic feet bottle of nitrogen and oxygen, and um, I think I'm going to be lucky if the nitrogen even lasts an hour of cutting time because it's high pressure and it uses it very quick. The oxygen is going to uh, last much longer. So um, I'm actually going to experiment with uh, an air compressor that I have. It has a very low output, but it's capable of 200 psi. So I'm going to see if I can get away with using it with some very short cuts, you know, for a part that only lasts maybe 20, 30 seconds or something. 
Uh, I don't know how I almost forgot, but there was one other major hurdle for this project, and that was the budget. Um, through my research online, um, it seemed like even for a, a smaller footprint uh, machine, commercially available machine, it seemed to be in the thirty to fifty thousand uh, dollar ballpark range just to import a machine. And I don't have that kind of money for a hobby project. Um, so even uh, this DIY machine costs fifteen thousand dollars to build. So um, all of my uh, component choices and design decisions were based on trying to meet that budget. So keep that in mind. The most expensive component in this project is the laser source. Um, I did lots of shopping around. Uh, there's a company uh, called Cloudray Laser that sells a lot, a lot of the items you need, but um, they were quite expensive. I was able to save at least a couple thousand dollars by importing directly from China. Um, you know, I did have to pay shipping and uh, duty fees, but uh, in the end, I was still able to save money. I bought the cheapest laser control system I could find. Um, I purchased uh, the laser head that has manual focus. I even used the cheapest servo motors off of eBay that I could find in order to, to bring the scope of this project into this budget. So before I close this out, let me show you my laser cutting process. centimeters I guess but uh, yeah first test it worked it's pretty awesome well that's it for this first video uh, I just wanted to give you an introduction to the project I think next time I'll probably show you um, about uh, building the gantry and the frame uh, maybe hooking up the motors too uh, we'll see all right thanks